and they sang the song of Moses, giving all praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shabbat Hashem, Kakwadash. Now, what does that mean? Revelation 15, verse 3, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High. This is all about the elect. The Most High is only concerned with the elect. When you read Revelation chapter 7, you read, pretty much read that whole chapter. Well, actually, you do. You read the whole chapter. It speaks about the 144,000, 12,000 out of each tribe. And it speaks about the great multitude in which you have Christians, these f fake Christians, saying that it's talking about the body of believers. You know, it doesn't matter what nation you come from or what tongue you speak. Because it's right there in Revelation 7. It said out of every nation, out of every tongue. So it's obviously talking about the... Uh, the body of believers which are from various different nations. No, that's all BS. That great multitude is referring to the rest of the elect of Israel. I don't have to read that because it's not too much to break down. Now the answer to Revelation 7, verse 9, which is the great multitude dressed in white with palms in their hands. The answer to that is Revelation, the fifth chapter, read the whole fifth chapter of Revelation. At the end of the day, when everything's said and done, the Most High is only dealing with the elect of Israel. He's not going to deliver all Israelites. The scriptures say in the book of Revelation in a couple of places, I may go to it, it says, uh, it speaks about the um, the book, the book of life. The only ones that are written in the book of life that will be, will be delivered that will not taste the second death pursuant to Revelation is the elect. The elect are written in the book of life. Remember when our Lord was the, um, going back and forth with Moses, the servant of the Most High, the Lord said that he would um, blot them out destroy them let me see if I can get that bear with me for a minute Okay, it's in a couple of places. It's in um, Exodus 32. Let me go up a few verses. Bear with me for a minute. I'll start from the 30th verse. You can actually read from the first verse. Which the title is uh, The Golden Calf. And the M-O-T-B is the New Golden Calf. The New Swine. That um, Antiochus Epiphanes 
forced on the people. And a lot of the people did what that wicked demon said do. And those are the same, same people coming back that will take uh, the new swine. Boy, now you got to read the whole chapter, but which I'm not going to read. I'm, I'm going to go to the 30th verse. It says, uh, Exodus 32, verse 30. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin. Let me jump to the first verse, and I'll jump back down to the 30th verse. Dude, um, is Exodus 32 and 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together and Aaron and said unto them, Up, make us, make us gods, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, yeah, this, this, this motherfucker, yeah, this nigga here, that's the attitude. The man that brought us up out of the land of the word should be Mizraim, not Egypt. And a Christian wouldn't understand that. If you say, if you go to this verse and say the word for Egypt, is that an original word? They'll say, yeah, it's all my ancient Egypt. Because they don't understand the script the scriptures. The scriptures. Egypt, the word there. There's a, there's a term called lost in translation. You should look it up. Meaning, when you read these scriptures, sometimes you have to go into the Hebrew and sometimes you have to go into the Greek when it deals with the New Testament. The original four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, was written in Hebrew and then translated into the Greek. Because Matthew's, Mark, Luke, and or John did not speak Greek. Now maybe you have a case for Luke, but uh, these men did not speak Greek. The only prominent man that spoke was known for speaking Greek was the Apostle Paul, and it could be, it could have been a couple others. Luke could be one of them. It says uh, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mizraim, we wot not. What has become of him? Where, where, where did the nigga at? And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden uh, earrings. So Aaron went off. But Aaron was forgiven for that. But he went off. Okay, it says Moses' anger, the 19th verse. Like I said, you got to read this whole chapter to really understand it. It says that Moses returned unto the Lord, Yahweh, and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if and if not, blot me, I, pl I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So, the... Um, the other Israelites outside the elect is blotted out of ultimately the book of life. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angels shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Meaning he's going to jack them up. Kill them. And the Lord plagued the people. Because they made the calf 
which Aaron made. Now, if you go to Numbers 11 and you read the first couple of verses, the pillar by the pill, the cloud of pillar by day and the, and the pillar of fire by night, that was a gigantic ship that led them through the wilderness for 40 years. Oh, and by the way, that ship didn't have to gas up. Can you imagine that? Something up in the air for 40 years, just up there in the heavens? And plus it was it, it was shooting lasers. It was it was shooting lasers at the people. It was shooting fire on the people. Remember it said, and the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made, meaning he was killing them. I'm gonna show you that. And then we'll come back into the subject. I'll start from the top. Matter of fact, it's in the first, first verse, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Numbers 11, verse 1. And when the people uh, complained, it displeased the Lord, Yahweh. And the Lord heard it. And said, and Yahweh heard it and said, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the other, the uttermost part of the camp. So how did he burn them? He, he burned them with, the, with them ships. They shooting lasers, setting them on fire. And the people cried unto Moses and Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he honored the, uh, the, um, the words of Moses. And that's in, um, also in the book of Numbers, Numbers 12. It says, uh, third verse. And he called the name of the place uh, Tabera because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. <laughs> and this was the and the fourth verse that tells you about the mixed multitude. They were the ones that were staring the spirit of Israel to go back into Egypt. So the Most High is not going to be delivering no heathens. So vocab, you're not going to be in the, in the ship. My nigga. Anyway, it says, uh, let me look up this word. Um, Thaba'ai Ra, which means burning a place in the wilderness of Peran. And to prove that they that that the laser beams are coming out the ship, let's go to Deuteronomy 33. I'm a little off topic, but that's okay. That's how the spirit works. 33. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Okay, 33 verse 2, De Deuteronomy. And he said, The Lord Yahweh came from Sinai and rose up from Seir, so that was south of Jerusalem, unto them. Remember, they were in, they were in the wilderness. They were not in Jerusalem as of yet. He shined forth from Mount Paran. Didn't we just read about Paran? He was he was he was he was shooting lasers on him from in in, in per, Peran. And he came with thousand ten thousands of saints, those are the angels, from his right hand went a fiery law from them. So that fiery law, that fire was the lasers. And that's what he was sh shooting them with. That's also in um uh, Second Ezra, the fourteenth, the thirteenth chapter. Excuse me, where the Lord was on something that Ezra thought was a Ezra thought was a mountain, and it said he was using laser technology 
to destroy the people. And that's what the angels are going to be using. Laser technology. So you're going to lose big time, Esau. Anyway. Where am I? Let me come back. Okay, let me come back to Revelation 15, verse 1. And they sing the song of Moses. Now you, you're going to get understanding of that. It says, um, and it's not talking about Exodus 15. It's talking about De Deuteronomy, what is that? I believe that's Deuteronomy 30, 32. Hey, to speak that the, what we're speaking now and we're warning the people is concerning the um, the M O B T M O M O T B. That's that's the major thing that's going to happen. And I said this; I've been saying this for the longest. The destruction, the deliverance, the kingdom cannot come unless and until you know Revelation. 13 comes to pass. And we here at Great Mills, Millstone can see it clearly. The ones of you other Israelites that can't see it, there's a reason why you can't see it. Read Isaiah, the 6th chapter, and around about the 8th, ninth verse on down, this is why you can't see it. Now the Most High opened up your eyes enough to see that you're an Israelite, but he hasn't given you 100% truth. He hasn't declared the whole gospel to you. Because if you knew the whole gospel, pursuant to uh, 1 John uh, 2, I believe that's 20, you have, an unction from the old, you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Which means 100%. So the ones of you that are coming short on... Pursuant to Revelation, the 13th chapter, you're going to cause your blind followers into error. This is what it's all about. This is why Esau, or the beast, led by the, uh, the lamb that spake as a dragon, which we know who that is, that's why they're pushing it so hard. These are the steps, the ultimate step is the the thing the karagma we're in that time so we can be out of here Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in 2022 we, we pray that Things are moving moving fast. The Lord said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning unto the earth. Anyway, it says, uh, Revelation 15, verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous seven angels, having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. Let's look up the word wrath. Oh, the Most High getting ready to do his thing. What more can this devil do? He did everything. He's been the perfect devil. So his last act is this thing. G2372 Thumas Thumas which means passion, anger, heat ang anger, forth with boiling up and soon subsiding again glow adore the wine of passion and flaming wine which either derives the drink of mad or kills him with its strength It says, um, I like the first definition a little bit better. Passion, anger, heat, anger, forthwith, boiling up and soon sub subsiding again. 
You know, when you boil water and it overheats, it goes over the pot. Anyway, that's the overwhelming anger and wrath of the Most High. And this is the Most High's MOTB um, any damn way. It says, and I saw, I'm sorry, first verse again. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and mob. For all you people out there that say, well, what about my job? Well, go ahead and keep your job, get the jab, and then get fired up and burn right along, right along to your, right along next to your buddy Esau. You better be ready for some hard times. You better think like a pilgrim in the earth. And the ones of you that have called yourself eating the roll, you better go out and teach the roll, man. It says, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving oneself. And these other camps, they're going to be caught out there. They're going to be scrambling. They got to use this saying for my man. They're going to be running, they're going to be hiding, and oh, they're going to be a sweating. Inside joke. It says, uh, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. And who's the beast? And over the, his image, who's the image? And the image is not a picture of no goddamn Caesar Bogier or Cesare Bogier. And over his mark, what has Great Millstone been teaching you from day one? What the mark is? So you got other groups like IUIC, they don't even touch. Those verses, they don't even touch the 16 verses, uh, 15, 16, 17 verse. They don't, they stay away from it. They stay away from it. And over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High, and they, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord Power Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of Saints. So that's Deut Deuteronomy. Where is that? Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 30, 32 and 1, which is entitled... If you go to the blue letter, the song of Moses. Let's go back to Revelation. And they sing the song of Moses. What's the song of Moses? Deuteronomy 32 and 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O ye earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. But that's why more of you should be out there on the highways and the byways, man. Most I ain't looking. There's no scripture where the most I is looking for cheerleaders. There's supposed to be over a million camps out there. What does it say in Luke 10? Luke 10. Eat the, well, it says in Ezekiel, eat this roll. But what does it say in Luke 10? Let's start at the top. After these things, the Lord appointed uh, other seventies also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. 
Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. The Most High is not looking for cheerleaders. The Most High is not looking for uh, uh, people to come on the comment board and say, uh, you know, double liners and all that. You're supposed to be out there teaching, especially if you're a man. If, you are, if you're a man and you're watching our videos and you're not out there on the highways and the byways and you're not doing those sit-downs and you're not in, uh, eating the roll, well, well, if you're watching this, of course you're eating the roll. But you got to eat the whole roll. And then you got to go out to the children or the sons of Israel and preach unto them. The most I ain't having that. I'm going to put the talent in. My, Luke, read Luke 19. Why do you think so many individuals that came into this thing fell off and went back into the world? Or, or bug the hell out. A lot of them dropped dead too. Why did the Most High take Comfy out the picture? Why do you rip him out the fucking frame? Tazadakia. Because he wasn't doing the word, the, 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 the will of the Most High. He was doing his own will. He was doing his own thing. And the Most High took him. And he's going to take more y'all. Pray ye therefore the Lord of, of the harvest. That he would send forth laborers into his harvest there should be a million camps out there there should be a million a millions of youtube pages dealing with israel man the scriptures speak about being lukewarm let's get that let's get that And a lot of you that don't that know not to take the jab and the and the karagma, you're gonna wind up taking taking it anyway because you're gonna fail that test pursuant to Revelation um, three verse ten. And the rest of you going you're gonna bug out, man. When the hell did I say I was gonna go up? I'm, I'm so uh oh Yes, sir. How can I forget? Revelation. And I used to read this every every um, week at the camp. And brothers used to cringe. Now the only two people left that was in my the camp that I had going back, what, almost 30 years ago. The only two that are left is uh, Apostle Gabar. Apostle Reimlaub was in another camp. But he became a part of the circle of myself and Gabar. So it was a it was a Apostle Gabar, Bishop Nathaniela. He was in the room when I used to bring it out. And another one, that feminine, I mean not feminine, but emotional wreck, uh, Rob Karab. Daniela did a video on him. He had the shirt with a line on it. He had the big staff with the Hebrew on it. And he started sprouting out that Hebrew. Well, he done turned his back on the, on the, on the plow uh, more than once. Why would pre, uh, Priest Daniela praise this guy? I don't know. The man, but first of all, he's cold. He's cold. It says here, so in Revelation 3, it says, um, I know thy works, that thou art neither, neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. Meaning you're complete. Either it's two ways, man. Either you're on fire about this truth or you're cold meaning you're not about the truth a man that turns his back on the plow is cold he don't want to do this no more a man that's on fire is hot 
And he's about, he can't wait. Like me, I can't wait to get down to the camp today. Now you got the guy in the middle, which he's so-so. The most High's not dealing with lukewarm individuals, man. That's why so many of you have fallen out and have bugged out. If this gospel be Acts 5, if this gospel be of, of men, it shall come to naught. But if it be of the Most High, you cannot overturn it. You cannot destroy it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So with the last few seconds of this man's kingdom, of this man's setup. It says, 16 verse, So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou saidest, I am rich. And you got a lot of guys, you got Yohanna. Yohanna don't go out, period. He don't go out, period. He don't go out. Is Maybe it's because of the riches that he has. You can't tell me that man is on fire because he's not. He's not hot. Just telling the truth. I'll give a little credit to uh, Bishop Nathaniel or Nathaniel, guys, we should call him, because he does do videos, but he needs to get the 100% truth. He needs to stop playing games. Because what we've been saying, pursuing... Uh, as far as Revelation 13 goes, we are 100% truth. And it's happening. It's not going to happen. It's happening right now. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Let's look up the word spew. If you eat something and there's a funny taste, you, you spit it. You don't say, mm, let me eat some more of it. I don't know. Mm. No, you spit it out your mouth. So you left a bad taste in the Most High's mouth. Let's look up the word spew. Strong's G, 1692, Emeo, Emeo. To vomit, vomit forth, throw up. So it's something bad a taste in your mouth. You, well, you swallow it, then you throw it back up. And that spew is written only one time in the scriptures. That's in Revelation 3, verse 16. And there's no etymon on that word. You know, if you eat something that's bad and it goes into your body, your body rejects it against your will. You know, the when you vomit, when you throw something up, you might be sitting down, and you eat something, then you feel it in your stomach, and then you run to the bathroom, and sometimes you don't even make it to the bathroom, and it comes up. It's involuntary. You can't control it. So that's how the Most High looks at you that have taken that, the, the, the talent and hit it, put it in, wrapped it in a napkin. The ones of you that take breaks, the ones of you that take winters off. Either you're on fire for this thing or you're not, or you're, or you're lukewarm, or you're, or you're cold. If you're in the middle, the Most High is going to push you out of there, man. Let me go back to Revelation. I'll close it. Revelation 15, verse 2. 
and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. We know what that's talking about. That's talking about we're going to be up in the heavens looking down on the earth being on fire. Right above Babylon. He's going, he going to have us hovering over Babylon. Hey, that's a video right there. Hovering over Babylon. Another precept that comes to mind is uh, Psalms 91. So you want to get the long version of Revelation 15 and 2, read Psalms 91. Only with thine eyes shall thou see and behold the reward of the wicked. No plague shall come nigh thee. No plague shall come nigh thy house. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that got the victory. Who got the victory? The elect. The 144,000. And the rest of the body of believers. They wore white which were from all the tribes of Israel. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. A lot of you don't even know who the beast is, man. Johannes said the, uh, the mark of the beast is sleeping with white women. King Solomon had the, had the mark of the beast. How in the hell, how in the fuck can King Solomon have the mark of the beast when the beast didn't even come on the scene? The first beast... During the AD period, man. So we're talking, we're, we're going back about 800, 850 years when Solomon, which was 850 BC, around that time period, the beast came about 850 years, almost 900 years later. So how, how in the hell can Solomon have the mark of the beast? Because he doesn't know, he doesn't understand prophecy. See, when we come across that word, the beast, in Revelation, it's already a picture in our mind. When we come across the word, his image, and over his mark, the mark, it already is in our mind. It's in our mind. This is what, this is what John the Apostle saw. He saw chipping stations. He saw them getting jabbed up. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Y'all, hey, you other camps, you better get with the program, man. Great Millstone is the only camp that has 100% truth. Real talk.